have the honor of joining us from Yerushalayim. I'm going to Rebbeah Goldvich, Rosh Hashiva in, in YU, Yeshiva's Rebbe Yitzhak Olchanan, and his very successful and accomplished son, Itiel, who's the head of the Israeli division of Eish Atayra. He's associate rabbi to Rabbi Beryl Wine, the famous author. Welcome, Rameyer and Itiel. Rebbe is supposed to be here. So Rameyer, the, the, the mission, I believe it's in India, says that the Pasik says, Veheshev Levavo Yisalbanim, that the first thing that Elio is going to do when he comes, he's not going to bring be makar of the Rechaikim. He's not going to put people in the mikveh. He's not going to put people back in yeshiva. What's he going to do? Velosh in the Mishnah Nidias, he's going to be mar b'shalom ba'olam. And in particular, avay salbanim. It would seem that many fathers and children have difficult times getting along, right? Unlike you and your very successful son. But why would you say, why is that the example of bad relationships that need to be fixed, Avay Salbanim, first job of Elio? Before we start, I would like uh, first to say, what a pleasure, any time to have a conversation with you, for many years. Bezat Hashem, we will do this many, many years. Yudriyut and Bracha and Simcha. Amen. Years ago, generation was 40 years. Vayim Shana, Akut Gedor, Later, 20 years, in our time, generation, maximum three years. The gap between parents and children and so quick. Sometimes it's big gap. This creates sometimes tension. This can many times misunderstanding. Create many times for the next generation to not understand it was important to connect ourselves to a generation ago. The first challenge, first uh, mission, Melech HaMashiach, to explain to every one of us, we cannot build a future is not related to the past. This is the reason also, one of the reasons, when you come to the cemetery, Melech Israel to put stone on the grave. Stone in Hebrew is heaven. Then, the acronym of the word, Av Ben Nechet, father, son, grandson, Ima, Bat Nechda, mother, daughter, granddaughter, in a different way, to show us and to say to our parents and grandparents, Ima, Abba, it's a place where you stop, we build as a flow. We cannot build, we cannot connect ourselves to the past. And we know, when we talk about Glut, the Raided mention, we talk about ears. When we talk about redemption, we talk about generation. Because this is the mission of the nations, all the history, split between generations. And in our time, also the high tech in our time, and everything that we have creates this kind and create this kind of environment. For this reason, this is a first challenge. When we have this, we can build about this everything. So, Etiel, what did your father do to foster that you, he was able to sort of skip this generational gap and get into the eyes of Gen Xers? Like, what did he do? First of all, you can see it right here. <laughs> it's, it's that passion. It's that passion. And, and Chuka, we, we grew up with that passion. You know, I had a friend of mine who told me, he's like, you guys always have music playing in your ears, just the rest of us don't hear it. We, we grew up with, with, a, with a, I think, a lot of simcha, um, a lot of openness, a lot that we weren't, uh, I never thought that we were put into any specific box, but rather into the box of a Kodesh Baruch Whatever it is you do, you need to be doing it, l'shem shamayim, b'machab l'shem shamayim, to, you know, b'chol brachecha de'eyu, and the rest is is it's up to you, you know. And uh, and I think part of the hardship of a generational gap. I mean, I'm already starting to see with my kids. A lot of times, as parents, we view our children as an extension of ourselves. But we want them to go a certain way that we believe is the appropriate extension of ourselves. But on the other hand, we want them to be independent. And it's sort of this paradox that we have in chinuch. We want them to continue in what we believe is the right path, 
we also want them to be independent and to feel empowered. It's a hard, I think that's where parents sometimes have a hard balance. And Baruch Hashem, I look, I look at my parents and, and I think that's what we got. We got that the, the extension of the Mesora very clear. It was, it was whatever you do should be a, a way to be Mekadosh Shemaim in this world. Whatever you do should be with I would say those are the two core values we grew up on. Everything else is up to you. So I think it's that balance that, that we need to teach also to, to the next generation because it's you want there to be an extension, but you can't micromanage the extension because then it gets too difficult on the kids. You should just set the core rocks and values that are the, the unbreakables. Those become, and, and those are so wide and there's so much room for individuality in it. And I believe that's, that's the type of chinuch we got at home and I think that gave us the flexibility to feel that whatever it is we're doing, we're doing it because of ourselves and not necessarily because I was forced into it or, or my father. <coughs> Rene, you know, it says, just to respond to what you said, it says, Tishbi, Elio Tishbi. So the Gemara said, the Chazal say, Tishbi Yatari Tkoshes Vabayit. They say he was Tishbi. So I remember years ago, I saw in some Pirish, he says, why is Elio going to be Metaritz all the Tekus? Why not my Rabbeinu? Right, Maisha, the, you know, and he said, because Maisha wasn't there. He doesn't understand what it means to tell a kid how to use an iPhone. He doesn't know what an iPhone is. He never heard of the internet, right? But Elio is here every day with us. The person who's, the one who's there with you, he's the one who could be Metaris Takashi. not somebody who's so many generations separate. Moreover, Elio, you mentioned, we find them the time he's a doorway. He stands a doorway night of Pesach, never walk in because he knows how important to combine inside and outside. Some of all his uh, essence, the doorway stands a doorway of the cave of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Shimon Bayochai, sorry, Rabbi Lazar. He stands a doorway, Gmarai Maseret Bachot, Rabbi Yossi walk into the old building in Yerushalayim and he teach him how it's important combine himself <clears throat> what happened inside. Okay, which leads me, Rene, it leads me to my next question. This generation, I would argue, has a challenge that no generation that preceded it had it in, in, in so powerful a way. And that is the internet. Where uh, a little boy who's 10 years old, he's given access to a computer with two wrong keystrokes could be places where his Elta wasn't at 90, never saw, right? How should we be mechanach our children in these very scary times where the entire world could be at a 10 year old's, the children are growing up so quickly. That unique challenge to chinach, I ask you both as a mechanach par excellence, as a world famous speaker, as a parent, a successful parent, how do we, like, do we go into denial? There are, like, there are many homes where they don't allow the internet. There are homes they allow the internet. It's like having guns on the table. What do we do? First, we need to say, all Moshe Bara, Kodesh Bochu, Bo'olamo, lo ba'ala lichmoidu. Everything that we have in this world is clean, clean for Chamaim. When we know to explain this in the right way, this make all the rest more easy. It mean, internet, what God who gives to our generation, give us opportunity to spread Torah from one side of the world to the other side of the world. It mean, this is necessary. How we teach them, how we build life for our children, do this in the right way, first, example. They see I'm not addictive. I don't look every minute. I have also time to look of people. They see me when I go to Daven, Chazarat Shatz, don't check my emails. They see, use this in the right way. Immediately, this go to affect our children. Because in one end, we want to give to our children 
is what is very necessary for the growth of them. We take this very serious, but in the same time, we do something else what is also necessary and serious. We don't have, we don't know how to do things the right way. This affects also the first one. It means if I show to my children, do this in the right way, not all the time, I bring them, share with me what I see, how we can learn from this, how is great. Uh, I need to build first before all the filters. We understand how this cle and one end is unbelievable. Positive way. When they understand and I show this to them, it's more easy to protect them in their own way. So Rabbi Tia, let me follow up what your father is saying. The Gemara says that Masechta Savaydazara of Brahma Vinu was 400 prakim. So I believe that the Mepharshim explained that Avaydazara was a very big issue in his time. There were, it, was, it inundated their lifestyle. So their discussions are not relevant to us today. It's the Umavatl, Yitzra Avaydazara. So today for Avaydazara is a skinny Masechta. They learn in Daf Yomi once he, I mean, it really has a lot of other halachas, Yainesa, etc. But for the most part, but do you believe, you have young children, Israel is one of the most connected technological societies in the world. Do you believe that we're not, we don't have a Masechtis internet in Chinuch? I don't know of a single yeshiv. I don't know any parents who talk to their kids about, look, there's Masechtis of Edezarab is my name, it was internet. And these are the rules and these are the laws, but it's sort of, we just slide right into it. How are you going to be Mechanuch, your children, about internet? I mean, I'll be Mamshik where where my father left off. I think I think we're we're creating that masechta right now, and we have to realize that it's a parsha. I think the I think Dole Yisrael actually realized that this will be a big sugya early on. Remember when they came out with like kosher phones? I remember that they're like, "Well, kosher, well, you need a, a hechsher on a phone," and it was a little bit ridiculed. But, but they foresaw that it was going to be a major issue of our generation. I think it is. Um, and, you know, the, we bring down always that the word yetzer is the source of the word yetzira. There's the same, the same koyak over there. You have a yetzer, but it's also the potential to build something. But there is, could, again, it could be a kli that could be used yetzer, or for yetzira. Right now, our conversation across the world is happening through the tool of the internet. I think the yeshivas have realized the koyak right now during this uh, pandemic. COVID-19, the co-op of connecting between worlds and the amount of Torah that is being spread through it is, is uh, phenomenal. And I think we need to get to that stage. I think there should be certain ground rules. And I think a filter in every home should be a necessity, just like you have regular kashras. I think every home should have, and it shouldn't be like, oh, you're from, and therefore you have a filter. It's like the basic, if you're a Jew, you can have internet, but you also have to have a filter. And I think once we have a basic misgaret of what to work in, and then the rest goes back to what my father was saying, it's, it's really the my sheet. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, very, I'm on the internet. I'm on the internet, I, I do videos, they, they go out there, people comment on it. And even for myself, I see that sometimes it's a challenge of, am I a good example for the kids or not? They don't know that I'm uh, answering someone's email about a halachic shayla or about a hashkafic uh, discussion or having a, a program, but if I, if I become too addicted to it, and I'm cautious that I am becoming, because it sucks us into it, and it becomes a part of our life, and an extension of our connections, but we all know that it, it ruins the real personal relationships that we want, so it's really setting ourselves the boundaries, and if we don't set ourselves the boundaries before we get too into it, so then it's it's a very hard mochama win, so it's in our hands to turn this Yetzer into a <coughs> superpower of Yetzirah, of creation and creativity. Like the Gemara says, the Gemara says that when they were mavatal, yet Sahara Darius, eggs, the chicken stopped laying eggs the next day. It's That's the right. same, right? That's right. So, you, so let you me ask you a BTL question. When you have such a big father, every son wants to develop their own identity, right? How, does, how do you grow up with your own identity and not feel threatened by the shadow of your father? Ooh. The classic rabbi son question. <laughs> you know, the rabbi son syndrome is like you grow up in your father's shadow. Baruch Hashem, a very big shadow. <laughs> and, and growing up in the yeshiva, my whole life I grew up in the yeshiva. That was our shul, that was our base manager. So it was always um, my father's son. 
and and uh, and I think you have to you have to grow up to develop your own name. It's an adjustment, an adjustment. My father always pushed me to have a kesher with other rabbanim as well, find my own like uh, chilek through through another rebbe. I felt that was my father is my my rebbe, but it, but he also pushed me to make sure to have a, a kesher with other rabbanim, and that and that helped me out very much. And then. And again, it goes back to what I said in the beginning. We were never put into a box. We were put into the box of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of like, you have to be, whatever you, you choose to do in your life, you have to be Mekad Hashem Shemam, you have to make sure that you'll always be a Kiddush Hashem, and therefore connected to Torah and to Tamidei Chachamim. And because we weren't put into a box, then it was easier to create my own box. And, and it's a box that as you mature, you realize what it is you have and you realize that you're, you're seeking that connection and that you want to learn from that. And my father is my biggest Baal uh, Eitza that I turn to for, for advice and for, and for where to go. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an adjustment, but it's a big schuss. <laughs> sure, man. I think that um, the gold of Mishpach, and I know I'm, just telling the island that Rameir is a Mechutin. His, his son, the brilliant Rebel Yada, is my son in law. But I told him everything you were, he knows. You were Machad <laughs> something that very few people give over in Chana. And they're not even aware of it. You gave your children a Simcha Sachayim. How are you Machanach for a Simcha Sachayim? first. I feel happy, excitement about what I do. Oh, Hashem, in the beginning I have study, continued Chinuch, continued Rabbanut, the other options, the Israel Army, many other places. The moment when I walk in, and I see how the Limud build me from inside, and this gives me Simcha Sahai. The children grow and see Simcha Sachai come naturally, it takes them, takes us with them also naturally. When you see in your life how it's important to give, not what I can get. So they stood up, Ma Chovato Beolam Bauzim Silas Yishorim say, really want, we want to give to other people. We say, Sachai, Ma Chesed. situation. This go to the next generation. So we understand. So we do all, I, all our life, my wife and myself, to raise children with multicultural. To try to take from anyone something that is good for us. Because we can take from different kind of people. Many things that we can integrate this in our personality. This bring all of them, and one hand they can learn in Shiva University. Sometimes in Mir and Israel, in Hebron. And they don't feel uh, uncomfortable in any place. In this way, what they see how we can deal with different types of people. Because the Torah comes from inside. Not job, not the uh, Koda, what we need to support the family, mission. Mission, what we do with full heart. Full excitement. Okay. That's the core. Yeah, let me ask you the question a little differently. This week's parsha is Benasnu al Tzitzis Hakonas. Right now, a lot of people are feeling like they're cornered. Right? I mean, the concept of Tzitzis is when you're in the corner, you have to look further, right? Tzitzis Milosh and Ria. You're in the corner, extend further. People are feeling so stuck, frightened, a pr- quarantine, maybe not an Eretz Yisrael, taking the lessons of Simcha Sachayim that your father gave you, your parents gave you, how would you be mechanach today? Your children on Simcha Sachayim, there's no, they were mevatel all camps in America. I don't know if you're going to Camp Missouri this year, but I think most camps were in battle. They, uh, nobody going on vacation. When we're in the Kanaf, how do we find Simcha Sachayim? Um, I think the source is again, it's what my, it's what my father said, Simcha 
The, the problem is, and this is one of our challenges, I think growing up in Chutzlar, and we don't even realize that it's a challenge, is that, is that we seek our simcha from the outside a lot of times. If only I had this, if only I had camp, if only I had a new car, if only I had upgraded this. And, and simcha is something that's outside of me. But that's not what real simcha is. That, that's a, I call that joy. That's a moment of joy. I got it, but it's only a moment. Simcha is lihios with simcha, is, is being the simcha. And that's something that is not totally on anything that's external. It is something that is totally only on, on the choice to choose what to focus on. And I think that's the koach of parents of what they want to choose this summer. Do they want to choose to say, well, I can't believe it's not like this, or this is a unique summer, and I'm going to build the back house with my kids in the, in the backyard, or whatever it might be. It's, it's, a, it's a consciousness. It's a choice of constantly choosing to see the opportunities that are in our, in our way, and in, the opportunities that come our way. And I think that, that's the chinuch that, that, that we got at home. Was, I remember as a kid, my father said, okay, we're, we're, we went to Hasidic fishes see the, the simcha and the eslavos of a community. And we would, uh, he took us down to Gush Katif and to Hebron to see the people who are Meiser Nefesh for Eretz Yisrael, and to, and to the Rosh Yeshivas and to the big Yeshivas to see what real Amelus and Torah is. And, and that was part of the Chinuch that we grow up, meaning the core is the same. The core is we're here to be Ovid Hashem, to be Mekadeh Shem Shemayim. A lot of different ways. And, and each person should really find his, his, uh, where, where his nefesh sits because the nefashos of everybody, you know, are attracted to different ways. And we need to, that goes back to the chanoch and alpidarko. We want our kids to go a specific way, but don't make that way too specific because then it's hard to communicate that. That kid has a different chunos and nefesh. You have to give him a wide variety of opportunities to express his chunosh but within the core of what it means to be a from Jew that's over the Hashem. Simply, years ago, when we arrived in America, we spent the Pesach in Shim University. We knocked at Minyan. The place was empty. All the neighbors uh, wanted to give an uh, explanation. It's not, wow, it's so weird. What do we could do? We need to go to Daven Minya, to Chapa Minya, to... We say, Adarabah, wow, it's a great opportunity for all of us to know more to each other and to grow together. And this also build the children on one care about the other, how everyone is generous with his brother to his sister, and everyone helps each other. You need to take any situation that you stay, that the Shabbat will bring you, to elevate this, to show naturally how we can take the good. This way, this affects him has by everyone in any time. A thousand memories were from those Pesachs, and this past Pesach, <laughs> I, I own my first Pesach Seder with my family. I told my wife, this reminds me of Pesach that we had as, a, as kids, because we were alone. It, but it, it made our kids, I felt that my kids got to know one another better. During the She's saying, Pesach, right? You're saying that when you're in a corner, the, the concept of Tzitzis Hakonov is look for the opportunity in the corner you're in. That's right. But Mayor, what do you value most about your relationship with your son? You know, he knows how to learn. He knows how to daven. He's a maggot shear. He has enikoch. If you had to think of what's the thing that you value the most, like when I think of my son, I think of fill in the blank. My relationship with him. Touch okay. mind to feel humble, to understand and to remember every day. Give us, we need to use this in the right way, give us more. What is the Messiah Beado? What is the Messiah Beado? Give us the Messiah. To remember this all the time, every day. When we grow, when we do uh, something, when we develop something, thank you, and not big shot. This is the way I would go, which I have said. Now me, Gdoyle Oilam, Gdoyle Oilam. Every one of them more humble from each other. This is in front of my eyes all the time. And if sometimes we have a little bit of a remember this Gdoyle, this give me a knock on the head. Come to the, the real, real Meir Goldrich. This helps to grow all the time. This is to my children. And Baruch Hashem, every one of them. 
the boys and the girl. Siyata Dishmaya, the will the light, because they feel humble, and they feel we hear, we watch a mind to make space to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in our life, in all the world. And Rabbi Tiel, what do you value most about your relationship with your father? Yeah, we could go on. Do we have another hour over here? <laughs> um, I'll, t- I'll tell you two, two uh, nekudas that I, I value very much, and I always turn to my father for them. Number one is we grew up with a very close pressure with Gedola Yisrael from, from the entire spectrum. And, and that was a, a very strong value in our house. I remember when my father would get the letters from Rav Shlomo Zalman Orbach, and when we would pass the Kester to Israel, that it was a Yom Rabbanim. We would go around to different uh, Rabbanim. So we grew up very much understanding that that's, that's really uh, what, what guides us. And, and I was always fascinated how where, whenever, wherever we went, they, they took us in, took us in with open arms and, and with a very warm welcome and, and for a long time. And it, and it was, I remember as a kid, we went through Chaim Brim, he like slapped me five. And it, it was like, a, it was a, a warm relationship in, in every single house that we went to. And that's something that I value and cherish. And I try to give over to my children as uh, very much. And the second thing is, I would say a, a very, my father is gifted with, with the opportunity. He sees things very clearly. And he's a tremendous Baal Eitzah for me. And he... He sees the big picture, and he, and he doesn't let the little details get in the way, and he hops situations very quickly, and he hops people very quickly. And whenever I'm in a, a question and a quandary, so I'll turn to my father, and without fail, he always hits the, the nail on the head and, and, and uh, directs me in the right direction, and I value that very, very much. So I value those two things uh, extremely very, very much in my relationship with my father. Yeah, and I see, by the way, and there I see the same thing with El Yada, how he's mamish right to la matara. He's able, he has a certain sense of where it's supposed to be. And also connect to different type of people. Everyone in his field. Is it the El, the Yada, everyone in his field. Connect to different type of people. Anyone feel, they close to them. Ish asheruach by. Asheruach bo, exactly. And this comes from... Nava, um, remember all the time what is our mission? To give, to give, and to bring a Kaddish Bochut to our life. Thank you very much for a beautiful interview. Thank you very much. Pleasure and honor. Your uniqueness and the passion, what the impact that you give to us all the time. And this is many, many times. conversation, Torah, logic, inside, deep. A long life. Happy life is your wife. Admi have a slain and only family. Amen. Kolta. Bye-bye.